Most programmers have a good understanding of CPUs because they grew up writing code for the CPU. But many are less familiar with the inner workings of GPUs and what makes them so special for building large language models. GPUs have now become even more important because of their application in deep learning and AI. Today, it is essential for every software engineer to possess a basic understanding of how they work. My goal with this video is to give you that background. We'll start by doing a comparison between CPU and GPU. As we progress, we'll explore the evolution of GPU technology, from early graphics rendering to their pivotal role in accelerating machine learning algorithms. We'll touch upon key GPU components such as CUDA cores and memory hierarchy, unraveling the mysteries behind their parallel processing. And by the end of this video, you'll not only understand their role, but also gain the basic knowledge needed to build your own AI ML models and large language models. So buckle up, and let's dive into the world of GPUs. Imagine you are editing a large video file. Here is how the data flows within your computer. The video is initially stored on the hard disk drive. Similar to external hard drive, it's great for storing large files but is slow to access data. And again, solid state drives or SSDs are also becoming more common, offering faster access times than traditional hard disk drives. Now, when you open the video editor, the program and necessary portions of the video file are copied from the hard disk drive to the RAM. This is much faster memory, like having the specific video clip you are editing readily available on your desk. Before accessing data from RAM, the CPU first checks its internal cache levels. And there are three types of levels. Level one is the fastest and smallest cache located directly on the CPU. It stores the most frequently used data for constructions from RAM, allowing for near instantaneous access. Level two cache is slightly larger and slower than L1 cache. It acts as a buffer storing frequently used data that doesn't fit in L1. The CPU checks here if the needed data isn't found in L1. L3 cache is the largest and slowest cache level in the CPU. L3 stores even more data than L2 and acts as further layer of optimization, reducing the need to access RAM as often. And if the data isn't found in any cache level, the CPU retrieves it from RAM and processes it to perform tasks like applying filters or transitions to your video. Now, as far as GPU is concerned, if you're performing complex video editing tasks like adding special effects, your computer might utilize the GPU. GPUs are specialized processors designed for parallel processing making them much faster for specific tasks like rendering video effects compared to the CPU alone. Now, just like fetching tools from across the room takes time, accessing data further away from CPU takes longer. This is why keeping frequently used data in RAM and cache is crucial for optimal performance. By minimizing unnecessary data movement between storage and faster memory, the computer can work significantly faster and smoother. The major difference between CPUs and GPUs is their design goals. CPUs were designed to execute sequential instructions. To improve their sequential instruction performance, many features have been introduced in the CPU design over the years. The emphasis has been on reducing the instruction execution latency so that CPUs can execute a sequence of instructions as fast as possible. Now, GPUs on the other hand have been designed for massive levels of parallelism and high throughput at the cost of medium to high instruction latency. This design direction has been influenced by their use in video games, graphics, numerical computing, and now deep learning. All of these applications need to perform a ton of linear algebra and numerical computations at a very fast rate, because of which a lot of attention has gone into improving the throughput of these devices. The following figures compares the architecture of CPUs and GPUs. As you may see, CPUs dedicate a significant amount of chip area towards features which will reduce instruction latency such as large caches, less ALUs, and more control units. In contrast, GPUs use a large number of ALUs to maximize their computation power and throughput. They use a very small amount of chip area for caches and control units, the things which reduce the latency for CPUs. The following exemplary diagram shows the core count of a CPU and GPU. It emphasizes that the main contrast between both is that GPU has a lot more cores to process a task. You may think of the CPU like a head chef who is highly skilled and handles complex single tasks with precision, ensuring each dish is perfect. They might not be the fastest for repetitive tasks, but their expertise shines in crafting perfection. Now, a busy kitchen might have several cooks helping the chef. These CPU cores are similar, not as experienced as the chef, 
but can work together on multiple tasks simultaneously. This speeds up the overall process like one chopping vegetables while another preparing the sauce. GPU cores are like a dedicated team in a restaurant preparing a specific dish like pizza. This team works very efficiently with each person handling a specific part of the pizza making process simultaneously. GPUs have many simple cores specifically designed to work together on large amounts of similar tasks and very efficiently. And this makes them ideal for repetitive tasks that requires a lot of calculations like rendering graphics or training AI models. This table below summarizes the key differences in chip area allocation and design choices between CPUs and GPUs based on their primary goals. As you can notice, for CPU, the main focus is low instruction latency, whereas for GPU, it is high throughput. And that is achieved by fewer number of more powerful ALUs within a CPU and many but simpler ALUs within a GPU. Now let's consider a concrete example. A CPU can add two numbers much faster than GPU because of its low instruction latency. They will be able to do several of such computations in a sequence faster than a GPU. However, when it comes to doing millions or billions of such computation, a GPU will do those computations much faster than a CPU because of its sheer massive parallelism. This ability to handle many tasks simultaneously is called parallel processing. And it's the secret sauce of GPUs. They are designed with hundreds or even thousands of cores, allowing them to tackle massive workloads efficiently. Now, you might wonder how do the GPUs tolerate high latencies and yet provide high performance? This is made possible by the large number of threads and massive compute power that the GPUs have. Even if individual instructions have high latency, GPUs efficiently schedule threads for execution such that they are utilizing the compute power at every point in time. For instance, while some threads are waiting for the result of an instruction, the, the GPU will switch to executing other non-waiting threads. This ensures that the compute units on the GPU are operating at their max capacity at all points of time, thus providing high throughput. We'll get a clear picture of this later when we discuss how the kernel executes in the GPU. Let's talk about GPU memory architecture. The GPU has several layers of different kinds of memories, with each layer having their specific use case. The following figure shows the memory hierarchy for one streaming multiprocessor or SM in the GPU. To handle tasks like video editing efficiently, your computer relies on two key players, the CPU and the GPU. While the CPU acts like the head chef handling overall video editing tasks, the GPU is like a team of skilled assistants working together to accelerate the specific task. The GPU has its own dedicated memory called VRAM or video RAM. Just like your assistants have their own toolboxes, VRAM stores data currently being worked on, similar to having frequently used tools readily available. And its size can vary depending on the GPU model, be it 16 GB, 40 GB, etc. Before accessing VRAM, the GPU checks its L2 cache. This cache holds frequently used data from VRAM, allowing even faster access, just like having the most frequently used tools within easy reach. Think of the GPUs as a workshop with multiple workstations, each called a streaming multiprocessor or SM. These SMs are similar to CPU cores, but not exactly. They handle specific video editing tasks like applying filters or effects, and the number of SMs varies depending upon the GPU model. Each SM has its own L1 cache, which is also known as SRAM or shared memory, acting like a mini workbench holding the most essential tool for the current task. In addition, some SMs might have specialized hardware like CUDA cores and Tensor cores. These are like the high-tech tools specifically designed for certain tasks. For example, CUDA cores are excellent for general purpose calculations, whereas Tensor cores are super fast at specific calculations needed in deep learning tasks. The speed of a GPU is measured in gigahertz, and it represents how many operations it can perform in a second. Similar to a well-coordinated team, a higher gigahertz indicates faster processing. Notably, GPUs are often much faster than CPUs for video editing due to their parallelism and specialized hardware, allowing them to tackle multiple tasks simultaneously. To further boost performance, some GPUs use HBM or high bandwidth memory, increasing data transfer speeds, and to optimize workflow, a technique called kernel fusion is used. Think of it like combining multiple smaller tasks into one larger task. This reduces the need to constantly switch between tools and data leading to a smoother and faster overall editing experience. Now, while GPUs excel in video editing, their significance has expanded tremendously in the field of deep learning. Deep learning involves training complex AI models that require massive amount of data 
and computations. Here is where the GPU truly shines. Similar to video editing, deep learning involves processing large amounts of data simultaneously. GPUs with their numerous cores and ability to handle parallel tasks efficiently are perfectly suited for this demanding workload. The presence of specialized hardware like tensor cores in some GPUs further enhances their deep learning capabilities. These cores are specifically designed to accelerate calculations heavily used in deep learning algorithms, significantly boosting training speed and efficiency. Deep learning models often require access to vast amounts of data during training. GPUs with their high memory bandwidth aided by technologies like HVM can efficiently move data between memory and processing units, crucial for smooth training performance. Now, we know that training large language models like the ones that power chatbots or writing different kinds of creative text formats requires a lot of data and memory. And as the demand for GPU memory increases, optimizing the memory hierarchy becomes crucial. Flash attention is designed to maximize the utilization of GPU memory and leverages its high-speed components such as tensor cores. The process of optimizing involves increasing the speed at which data flows between different memory levels within the GPU, such as from GPU memory to L2 cache and ensuring that data fits into on-chip memory like L1 cache or SRAM. And this optimization allows flash attention to unlock the full potential of the GPU's parallel processing power. In addition, by fusing kernels, flash attention can achieve faster execution and improve memory efficiency, making it a crucial optimization technique. With that, I trust this video has provided a foundation for understanding GPUs, which I intended to introduce as a stepping stone towards building LLMs.